Jack Rana FM is where you are tuned into. My name is Tavisa Kambuli, the Fresh Prince of Radio. And today, <laughs> in the Jack Rana FM building, the one and only Vusi Tembakwaya. Mr. Kambul Air. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. You're not stranger to, to Jack Rana FM, though. You've been here before. I have been here before. Yes. Admittedly, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. must come visit more often, though. Well, you know, I, I don't... Um, I'm not the rock star that you guys need. Ah, come right? on. So you, guys, come. you all need big people, big characters. are going to give you big numbers. You oh, know, I'm man. A, I'm a simple man putting bread on the table. Oh, man. So humble. So humble. Oh, goodness. The last time that I saw you, me and you were getting down to Mafiki Zolo live That's right. on That's stage. Right. That's right. That's right. At the you XM remember Gala. that? Yes, right, yes, right, yes. Right. And it reminded me of a very unpopular post that you made, mm. and that is to rest. Yeah. But I saw you actually taking a bit of a breather yeah, yeah, yeah. and resting. Yeah. How important is that for you? I mean, I think it's foundational. I think a lot of us, look, I, I was one of those people who, who genuinely used to believe in this idea of uh, constantly push yourself, constantly work, and, and there is a truth to it. Mm. But, as, but, as, but as a believer, one of the things I've come to understand is that you can only build from a place of rest. Come on. Right. And so, and so, and so what a lot of us do is we don't understand that rest gives you perspective. Right. Rest gives you a sense of taking it all in and, and appreciating what's around you. And I, I, I want to say here, because I was one of those people who was really guilty of making people feel bad mm. for resting. No, same here. Right. I'm sorry. Mm. I was wrong about that. Take your time. Get out of the game for a little bit. Rest. Mm. Because your, your body needs it. Your mind needs it. Your spirit needs it. Mm. You, you need to be refilled and refreshed. And you can't pour from an empty cup. And so I just got into a stage, I didn't realize it, but I got into a stage where I was becoming toxic. Yeah. Yeah. Now it takes, it takes, it takes a lot of self-reflection to know that about yourself. I just got to a stage where I was becoming toxic. Mm. I was becoming a difficult boss for people to work for. I was becoming a manager, not a leader. And I was in conversations, having discussions that I shouldn't have been in. And that spirit of toxicity only found me because I wasn't allowing myself the grace of rest. Mm -hmm. And so I was forced into it. I mm -hmm. literally was forced into, mm -hmm. you've got to take some time mm -hmm. out. And when I did, I then didn't realize, I didn't recognize who I had become. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I'm, I'm going to need to rewrite the script. So today, rest is a foundational part Come of how on. I move. Like, I will turn down international opportunities and work if my spirit doesn't feel rested about it. And, and if they interfere with my program of the things that I need to recharge, right? So my kids are like a battery cell for me. Like my kids are like a Duracell battery. The minute I spend time with them and I plug into that energy, I'm immediately recharged. Ooh, I love it. So you can't pay me any amount of money mm. to spend time away from my kids. Like it's not happening, right? So yeah, I, I think rest is, uh, is, is very important. You saw it that um, night, right? You saw yes, it. exactly. That's why I said, wow, man, it was amazing for me to actually see you just have a good time. And I can be that point of kinders. So I want to speak about generational wealth with you, right? Um, there's an orator by the name of Frederick Douglass. Mm. And in your opinion, one of the best, of course. The greatest. Hold Come on. on. <laughs> Not one of. Let's be clear. 20 years as a professional public speaker. <laughs> Multiple awards later, there is no orator in the history Come of the on. world that has used the linguistic language to communicate better than Frederick Douglass. Oof. Unbelievable. And I love how you just said that, right? And something that he said is, it's easier to build strong children yes, sir. than to repair broken, broken men. men. That's right. That's right. How, how, how does that, or how does that translate in Vuzi Temakwa's life? I mean, I found that. I found that in my own experience. Mm. I actually tweeted that. And, and uh, I remember I was doing a keynote in Nigeria at the platform hosted by an incredible brother in Christ of mine, Pastor Poju. And that was literally the theme of my keynote, right? Build strong children. Don't repair weak men. And I think we live in a society today where we don't know how to build strong children anymore. Oh. Right. So I, I look at it and, and there are a couple of things I want to say on this. First, I, I don't want to I, I hate the idea of positioning myself as a model of anything mm. like everybody listening to this. I'm just a student as as much as I know, I have twice as much to learn. Right. So I'm constantly submitting myself to the wisdom and experiences of other people because that edifies and grows you. Come on. Right. But as a parent, one of the things I've learned and I learned this the hard way was money doesn't substitute time. Mm. 
and and a lot of us do this, especially like uh, middle class parents. This is, by the way, race agnostic. You typically find it with middle class people who are trying to make a better life for their children. In the economy that South Africa is in now, with what's happening in the state of our economy today, whether you're a business owner, typically what we're seeing in the data today is that business owners are actually no longer cash flush. <laughs> and so they're reinvesting a lot of their own personal uh, wealth into their businesses to keep them going. But when you see them in the streets, they still drive the latest model of the car, so you can't see that. Mm -hmm. But behind the scenes, that's the story. For the middle class parent who is employed today, the rate at which the rand is depreciating relative to other currencies and how that affects the purchasing power of the basket is not consistent or rather concomitant with the rate at which your purchasing power needs to increase. So you're working, but you're feeding yourself getting poorer. You can't buy as much stuff as you used to be able to buy. And that's set aside from all the other issues we're facing. Service yeah. delivery, which means you now need your own private medical medical insurance. You need your own car. Uh, you need, you need, you need, you need. All of these things are b basically you know, undeclared taxes that you've got to pay. The state mm -hmm. should be providing them, but mm -hmm. they're not providing them. So you've got yep. to do it for yourself. All of this leads to highly anxious, highly strong people, right? Who want to provide the best for their children. And if there is a thing we do not sacrifice as parents is we don't sacrifice how we provide for our children. And one of the Man. one of the misnomers of our time is that what you provide for your children is what you pay for rather than who you are. It took me a long time to learn that. Like I, I it it took me genuinely the first three years of my of my youngest life because I, I missed Moby's first three years so I missed them completely on, on that point mm. um, and th this was actually my next question to you so you missed out on three years mm. of your youngest life mm. was it worth it I mean, at the time, I thought it was, right? Because again, I, it was in my head, the whole toxic thing about, you know, go and build and do whatever. And I, I, was, I, was, I was all over the media talking about this. I was doing podcasts and guys would interview and I'm like, yeah, 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 I sleep at the office. I work out at the office. All of these, all of this like very fairly masochistic idea of what building looks like. Um, and, and I realized, and I realized three years in that I was absent mm. and, and that as much money as I was making, he, he, my son didn't need money. He needed a dad. Yep. Right. And and I, I hope this, I really hope this touches and ministers to somebody, but the most important thing you can provide to your children is you. Time. I, know, yep. I, I know, I know you want to provide them with a good education. You want to provide them with a better life. You want to provide them with a life better than you had. You want to provide them with a good school to go to, a oh, good you're suburb. Speaking a good, to me, man. All of it. Like mm. I get it. I get it. And please do it. Mm. But don't sacrifice the intensity of your relationship. Because this custodial duty of raising the next generation that God gives us, that's exactly what it is. It's a duty of custodianship. Come on. Right. And if you're going to be a custodian for that next generation, you can't custodian from a distance. And you certainly can't custodian from a checkbook. Oof. And so and so what a lot of us are doing is we're custodianing and parenting from a checkbook. And so it's, but I gave you this. My, my kids love sneakers, right? But I, I've learned not to monitor dad's value by whether or not they've got the latest brand of Air Forces. Because that's not where they need dad. Now, my oldest is a teenager. So mm -hmm. he's getting into those teenage years. Is that 13, 14 stage? Yes. And I'm learning, by the way, I've got to tell you, I'm learning a lot through this yep. kid. Because pa parenting a teenager, man. It's difficult. Oh, it's there's difficult. A, there's a <laughs> book. A 15 year old. Yes, it's very difficult. There is an entire book there. Somebody <laughs> needs to, I don't know what we're going to call it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something like the lunatics run the asylum or something. But I, I don't know what we're going to call the book, but there's an entire book oh, there. Man. Because, sorry, just the last note, because I'm mm. watching him become. And he's, he's, he's not who he used to be. And he's not yet who he is called to be. Oh. He's in that space between. In the middle. And I, I kind of recognize that I've got this duty of holding his hand through it, but letting him walk in and not me. Mm. And so that holding the hand through it, that's a proximity thing. I can't Yo, do that from a distance. Man. And I can't obfuscate it. I can't write a checkbook and say, go hold your hand over there. I've got to do it. So that's basically like guiding him and not being God in his life. Let me tell you, you've nailed it. Because sometimes I, I, it's about watching him make a call and go, that ain't going to work out. But let me sit back and watch how this goes. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And, um, and recognizing that if I don't allow him to make the mistake, that is a mistake. Ooh. But also recognize him that if I allow him to make a mistake so grievous that it destroys him, that's also a mistake. And so there, it's about the balance of giving him a safe space of, mm. of, of learning and a safe space of testing. 
you know, like like I, I see the way he spends time with his friends, and I I look at that age and I go, I remember this age. Yes, yes. You know, and <laughs> they'll go out to the mall or something like this, and he'll be spending time with his friends. I go, I know, I know these boys looking for girls at the mall. Mm-hmm. Ain't no movies at time, the mall. You know? Yeah, ain't, ain't no movies at the mall. <laughs> movies are what one and a half hours. <laughs> You're too old for, for, for pin bowling or laser tag. Oh, so, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to be at the food court and who's at the food court, right? So, but it's it's about trusting him and giving him that grace and giving him that space. Mm. And what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm praying to God to teach me is how to allow my heart to be a place of soft landing for him. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah. Yes. So that he knows that yes, even yes. if I make a mistake. Yeah, I can go to dad. Dad's got me. Come yeah, on. yeah, 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 yeah. Oof. And so, and so that old Vusi, the guy was like, do it and do it right. No, I, I can't show up as that mm. because then he'll run away. Mm. Right? It'll be a place of judgment. And and Yo, I've got to tell you just one last thing I've yeah, got to yeah, tell yeah. you this. I grew up like I'm a I grew up raised a high performer. Mm. So my entire life, right? It was like get the best grades, do da 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 da. da. And so I thought that that's the model of parent I needed to be because we model what we see mm. and what we see we model, right? And it 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 took me trying to build a relationship with my son to recognize that the fact that his name is Vusi Tembewayo is burden enough for this kid. Because he walks into rooms and exactly. people see exactly. surname and they I go, imagine. Yep. is your dad, mm. see what I'm saying? Now, I can't be the dad mm. who goes, why is this the mm. way? I've got to be the guy that says, listen, just be you. Mm. Dad, I love that. And yeah. I'm going to stick to the parenting part and I'm going to um, go to this part. Your mother worked for a company um, that did a BE transaction of about 4 billion rand. And yeah. I know that, that she didn't even get to see that. But this is the question that I have because I have, I have such a huge opinion about this, right? BEE, mm-hmm. does it build real entrepreneurs? It's a very complex question. Mm. Like most things in life, uh, the answers, answers are nuanced. They're very, very seldom are black and white. They're very seldom are absolute. Mm. I think there are a few things to say here. The first is that there is a difference between BEE mm. and BBEE. Right. The one is broad based. Ooh, now, I love it. Yes. We we know that the codes were changed and there are now six elements to what makes up BEE. In my opinion, three of those elements speak to how you create entrepreneurs. So supply development, for instance, enterprise development, for instance, both of those target how do you create an entrepreneur? Um quite narrowly, actually. The third one around skills development, in particular for people of disadvantaged backgrounds, allows people of color working in companies to be accelerated, to learn, to grow. Now, I come from a corporate background. And so a lot of my growth and learning was precisely because I was in a company that had to put me through accelerated learning. So my my growth was accelerated. I then became a very effective entrepreneur. So that speaks to it in an extent. But to the extent to which you talk about things like uh, management control and ownership, the jury is out in that. Here is what the data st- the data tells us, and the data are clear on these things, is that at last I checked between 04 and 2016, there or thereabout, we had done over 180 billion rand worth of black economic empowerment mm-hmm. transactions. Whilst necessary, we hadn't created 180 billion rand worth of new economic value. And so in oh. effect, what that actually means quite simply is that you didn't build a bigger boardroom, you just changed who was sitting in the chairs. Oh. Now, the consequence of this is, as you know, South Africa over the past 10 years has had an economic growth rate compounded at less than 1%. Mm. Our population growth compounded is about 2.8%. Mm. So the rate at which new people are being born supersedes the rate at which this economy is growing. Mm. This is precisely why young people are finishing school today and they can't find work. Because this economy they are coming into can't absorb them. Mm. By the way... This is before artificial intelligence, machine learning, the uh, internet of things. It's long before roboticization comes in. Like we're not even at companies using technology to achieve efficiencies and therefore automating functions that people used to perform. Women arrived there. That Mm. factory my mother used to work at when I was growing up, all of a sudden, my mother started as a store's clerk. So all of a sudden that job, that job is going to be performed uh, by a robot. And, And by the way, people hear this and they go, that's 20 years away. No, that's literally two years away Ooh. if you're lucky in fact i know today AI, yes, yes, yeah yes, yes. i mean i could tell you today i won't mention names of south african companies who are listed 
who run factories and manufacturing facilities that are roboticized in South Africa today. I've been there. I've seen it. Right. It's scary. And so, and so I think the opportunity for a black economic empowerment is not just one that says, how do you get a stake at the current economy as it exists? Come on. But also one that says, how do you build new economies? Oh, love it. And for yes. me, that's that's yes. the trick that mm-hmm. we missed, right? Um, and it's it's as I've gotten older, I've learned to have a bit of a bit more grace with these things. But I think that's the leadership trick that we missed. I watch a number of the funding mandates for state funding institutions, and they try to do the best they can. But the truth is that most of the funding instruments they have, and I say this with respect and grace, are me too funding instruments. Oh. So one creates one for manufacturing. Now everybody's got a manufacturing funding facility. Another one for engineering. Now everybody's got an engineering funding facility. Another one for agriculture. Now everybody's got an agriculture funding facility. And for whatever reason, all of them are convinced that they're being innovative, not recognizing they're replicating the same playbook. And so the real opportunity for us as a nation has to be about starting with asking the question, how do we build a new economy? Totally agree. Totally, totally agree. Thank you. You wrapped it up so beautifully for me. <laughs> All that I have to do is translate that into Afrikaans now and then I'll be good. <laughs> I would say this is my next you, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Look, you are such a winner. You are such a winner. At the age of 17, you won the world champs at public speaking. At the age of 15, you started public speaking. And at the age of 13, you won the mini contest at uh, Kuoko Shing. Yeah, yeah. And, um, man, you, you go all on, the way back. How'd you, you get all these stats? Uh, come on, man. Uh, when you are here, I make sure that it's worth your time. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, how do you keep on being consistent at winning? Because man, oh man, that's what you do. I mean, let me just say to everybody listening to this, winning is toxic. Oh, Yeah, I would advise against it. Winning is toxic. And the, and the problem with winners is we don't, we don't have a muscle. We don't have muscle memory for losing. Because you don't man. build muscle memory for losing. Because you have to have a healthy relationship with you losing. You've got to right? have a healthy relationship. Yes. Life is about, life, I've, I've learned, I, I learned this the hard way. Yeah. Life isn't about winning. Life is about winning after you lose. That's what life's about. So Muhammad Ali wasn't the greatest boxer of all time because he didn't lose. He was the greatest boxer of all time because even though he lost, he came back and won again. Come on. And so uh, I I wish when I was early, I'd built up the muscle memory to to learn how to lose, Mm. to understand that the loss doesn't define me. Now, the reason I say winning is toxic is this, is because if all of your life you win, you think winning defines you. Therefore, losing is going to define you. There is a beautiful poem by Rudyard Kifling. It's called If. Mm-hmm. And he's written the poem, and he's, the poem is for his son, and he's trying to explain to his son how to be a man. And there is a part in the poem where he, can say, where he says, If you can bear to hear the words you have spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, then he says, If you can, if you can meet victory and defeat and treat both imposters just the same, then you'll be a man. Oh. 12 years it took me to understand man. why would he call victory man. and defeat imposters? And because what he was trying to say to his son is you are neither the victory nor the defeat. You mm. are the conquest. So I would say to anybody watching this, wherever you are in your life and in your journey, right, the victory is already guaranteed. As a believer, I know that. So the victory in your life is guaranteed. You're saved already. You're good. Life is not about winning. It's just about having the courage to go on the journey. It's about the conquest. It's about next. Because wh- wherever you go, there is constantly going to be a level to, for which you are not good at yet. And you've got to have the humility to learn for next level. I'm in that stage now. Like oh. the stuff we were talking about before we started. Mm-hmm. I grew up in a particular school of public speaking and I feel called in a different space. And I'm wholly unqualified for this space. But I recognize that God has taught me how to lose now. So I know what losing feels like. I love like. your vulnerability. Yeah, man. I love I, it. And I think it's really important. Mm. Just, just listen, winning's great. Don't get me wrong. I also mm. want Bafana Bafana to win the African Cup of Nations. I'm winning. I, you. You know, <laughs> I, I want them in the finals of the FIFA World Cup too. I want it too. Um, oh, man. But I think we, we've got to be so careful of not making victory the end goal that we make it victory by any means necessary. Oh, 
Yeah. Man, yeah. You, you're such a beautiful speaker and I'm hearing you speak right now and literally you're touching my soul so much, right? And I know that you speak on some stages and you get to your keynote. People in the room don't understand you, but when you get to your keynote and there's a translator, you see the room basically moved in tears. Yeah. Would you say that, that when you're standing there, you're like, in, man, I'm in my purpose. Yeah. I know I'm in my purpose. Yeah. And... After that, getting to your house, parking the car, and having that moment of... Um, you said it actually so well. You said, and now you know how your dad felt. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> you saw that. It was, a, it was a WhatsApp status. Yeah. 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 I've, I've, I've finally reached the age where I just I get home, park in the car, and then I sit in it for a few minutes, and I just take it all in. And I was, when, my, when I was younger, my dad used to do that. I was like, why is he sitting yes, in the yes, car? Yes, yes, yes. I get it now. Dad, I get it. I get it. So, I, you know, I've, I've been... I've been very blessed. Again, when I when I was younger, I thought I I genuinely thought I had the ability to do those things mm. because I was supremely talented, and I didn't recognize that there are some things that are so beyond the scope of competency that talent can't deliver them. Uh, allow me allow me mm, to explain. Please do elaborate. Uh, yes, uh, yes, allow yes, me to yes. explain. When you're watching a soccer team play, right, in a in a in the La Liga or you're watching the, mm -hmm. the English Premier League, or even if you're watching the PSL here at home, that team of players are all talented. That's how they got to the Premier mm -hmm. League. Right. They're not playing first division. They're not playing, you know, university soccer. Yep. They're playing in the Premier League. They're all talented. So what separates a Max Mapungyan? What separates a Dr. Kumala? Uh, what separates a, Leonardo, uh, uh, a Ronaldo, a Lionel Messi, a Ronaldinho? A kaka. What separates those guys? Because the level at which they're performing isn't competence. It's grace. Oh, man. Now, now, if you don't have the eye to see it, you'll just go, oh, this guy was the greatest player of his generation. And really, they are. But they were that, not because they were a good soccer player, but because they were operating at a level where talent could not, the talent couldn't understand it, couldn't transcend it. Man. You know this to be true. Like uh, I'll, I'll try and prove it another way. There's every family has that grandmother who just has a well of mm. wisdom, and anytime you're facing any problem, you go to that grandmother or that aunt, and she's just a well of wisdom. It's this uncle who solves everybody's problems. And by the way, you know he's not particularly wealthy, or he's just a simple guy. But when you go to him, you draw from such a well of wisdom. You ask yourself, where does he get this wisdom from? It's grace. So. I am now with the stage Oof, where, man. <laughs> where I have... <laughs> by the way, I, I got to tell you. So there's a song by uh, Jay-Z, uh, uh, Jay-Z, Johnny Ive, and Kanye West. That's yes. before Kanye became Ye, when he was still Kanye West. Uh -huh. Remember, you know the old school Kanye. Yeah. Call it Dropout <laughs> Kanye. Kupola, yes. <laughs> yeah, the, we missed that one, Kanye, right? And uh, in the song, there, uh, Johnny Ive, the, 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 the poet is rendering a poem in the song. He says, we're all here for a reason on a particular path. You don't need a curriculum to know that you're a part of the math, right? And he goes on and then he says, um, but I get my hymns. He's talking about the words he writes. He says, I get my hymns from him. So it's not me, but he Come that's on. lyrical. Come on. And, and all I'm saying quite simply is this, is that when you understand that you are sent for a purpose and you're able to channel that and draw from that well, it's the most empowering experience you will Oof, ever have. And so for me, you know, the ability I'm able to get up on a stage in Guangzhou and speak to people that don't understand English, and 30 minutes in, there is a tear in mm. the audience is precisely because I've, I've tried to learn how to channel that. And I have learned how to surrender myself to the will of that. I had a keynote I was delivering last night. It was a two-hour masterclass. Yes. My team did six weeks worth of work. We prepared for it. I had an entire slide deck. You've seen my decks. Mm -hmm. Nobody touches me. Mm -hmm. And I had an entire slide deck. I had materialized content. And before I went on stage, I felt led in a particular way. And I dumped the entire deck. And I spent oh, two come hours on, Holy Spirit. in the direction at which I was led. And I, 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 say, I say this only to say the following. I'm not qualified for this. I'm not the guy for this job. I really am not. But what I can tell you is that there is a greater wisdom in the world. And when you submit yourself to that wisdom, you'll be very, very surprised with what your life turns out to be. But so many of us are blinded and we're blinded by the world. We're blinded by the flesh. We're blinded by the things around us because they're immediately evident. You can see it that we don't understand that we operate in a different frequency. Mm -hmm. So.
want to take you to a moment where most probably I think this was the best ever birthday present that you could have ever had. <laughs> Why the laugh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know about Otis, man? <laughs> I believe this is the song that was on repeat while you were touring. That's and right, yeah, uh, yeah. Vusitema you got to speak at the International Leadership Summit in Dallas. And on your birthday, you got to meet the one and only T.D. Jakes. Incredible. Bishop. Man. Right, yeah, yeah. Abutaka, you are a global speaker. You do the things for this country, you know. And um, I think just to, just to wrap up, uh, as a country, I don't think we thank you enough. Um, I want to... I want to say thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for really going out there to the world and showing the world what South Africa is actually all about. And with that, um, I couldn't give you a birthday present on your birthday, mm-hmm. but I'd like mm-hmm. to give you a birthday present that is something that is in person, right? I'm going to ask uh, other Vusi um, just to call out on a gentleman and introduce him to you. This gentleman's name. <laughs> 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 Can I give you a hug, man? I'll give you, man. So, Yesterday. the gentleman that you see right there, his name is Marcius van Antwerp. Right. Self made millionaire. My man. Because you spoke at a school and you inspired him as a young boy. My God. And he got to be this great gentleman that he is today. And with that, I just want to say thank you to you um, through everything that you've been through, through the stuff that people have called you, through the stuff that you have been accused of. Um, He goes through basically the same. (laughs) But I want to say to you, thank you. I actually want him to tell you the story himself. Yeah, I want to hear this. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Look, I think when, when you start elevating in life, it's almost like the previous life you had becomes a but of a blur. That's exactly right. I yeah. can't remember exactly where I saw you, but I, I know that that day I realized two things. The first is that it's possible, Ooh. and the second is one day I'm going to make people feel the way you made me feel today. That's incredible. Oh. And, oh man, I appreciate it. I'm I'm doing what I'm doing because you you were brave enough to do it. Oh, man. Sure. To God be the glory, brother. Amen. I wish I could take credit. I'll take 10%. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the Marcus, credit, but I'll take 10%. Is that one question before we go to Vusi? Is that one question that you want to ask? You guys have me in tears here. Come on, man. Guys. <laughs> you should have told me this was going to happen. I'm going to get you back. I'm going to get you back. I'm actually trying to make a black man cry. <laughs> oh. um, if, if I can ask for something, I'm not going to ask for advice because you give more than enough of that mm. on social media. Um, and I don't want you to do it on, on air or anything, but I would ask you if you'd take 60 seconds to pray for me. Let's do it now. You okay with that? Hmm. Wow. <sighs> Father God, we come to you in this moment, your children, and we submit ourselves to your will and to your grace. We bring your son to your presence Mm. and we submit him to your will and to your grace. We know, Father God, that it is only through you that all things are possible. And that even though it makes no sense in the eyes of man, but we serve a living God, Mm. a gracious God, a forgiving God. And just as you did with our Lord and Savior in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father God, we ask that you give us the grace, the wisdom and the courage to let not our will but your will be done. Come on. And so in this journey, in this journey that you have your son going through, Father God, we ask of you three things. First, protect him. Mm. The means of the enemy are vast and his people are wily. And any a time that we declare ourselves warriors of the kingdom, we know that the enemy sends warriors in our direction. Second, humility. Give of your son, Father God, the spirit of recognizing that it is not him but you, that he is just the vessel. He is just the capsule that keeps your spirit and your grace and graces the world. Yes, Lord. And third, reach. Give him reach, Father God. 
that he might minister and profit to the nations, that he might inspire the next generation, that each time he opens his mouth, mm. people might feel your spirit and your grace and your glory. What a season we are in, Father God, in this incredible season where our country is seized with a lack of leadership and a lack of thought and creative ideas and innovation that you might have here two young people of this country of different races submitting themselves to your grace in the broad spectrum that is transmitting out to the world today, observed by all. Only you could have made this moment happen, Father God, and we yeah. submit ourselves to that. And so, Father God, here we are, just your sons, humble and contrite, submitted to your will and ready to serve you. We know we are not ready. We know we are not capable. So reduce us and increase you. These are the things we ask in the gracious name of our Lord and Savior. He who died for us and after three days in a tomb ascended and into the heavens. There he is set by your right hand and he ministers on our behalf and intercedes for us. It is through him that we render this prayer and the gracious Lord of our name of our Lord and Savior let the church say amen. 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 Well, I'm going to get you back. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get this guy back. He doesn't even understand what I'm going to do to him. You, you can just leave me now. I, gotta, I, I can pull a couple of strings with him. <laughs> yeah, I'll get him you back. Know, I, I just want to say before you wrap. Mm. Uh, first, uh, I want to say to you that um, I know it's taken long for this interview to, to take place. Mm. And, uh, you know, just the organization of the things we do and my team and uh, the constant travel that I'm on. And, and I, I want to thank you for the patience uh, with me and my team for putting all of this together, uh, for waiting for us, for receiving us. Uh, people you. watching this won't know, but twice we've postponed, I think the last time, literally on the day of the mm -hmm. interview. And uh, I recognize the amount of organization that goes into putting something like this together. So thank you. Thank you. The second thing I want to say to you is this, is that I, um, you know, when you, when, you, when you stand at the crucifixion of man's affliction and you're being tormented and uh, attacked, you feel the natural urge as a human being to defend yourself. Mm. And one of the things I have, I have learned and you have ministered for me through this is that the people who need to know the truth know the truth. Come on. And that you don't need to speak it. And so... I know about rooms that you've been in where my name has been mentioned and how you've held my flag for me. And I just, I just want to say thank you, man. I, I see you. I see you. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you for your time. I know you are a very busy gentleman and I have so much respect for you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for visiting and please come and visit again. Consider it done. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> Tell us a couple of words, Jack Rand FM. Yeah, that was sicker my best interview with my wife. Thank you, Thank you, guys. Jack Aranda. FM.